Hey, what's going on, everyone? Today we are here with um, High Ticket Commerce Incubator student member uh, Ryan. Uh, Ryan, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, name, where you're from? Yeah, absolutely. Ryan Tetrol from Southern California. Been in the program now for uh, about two weeks and went through all of your free content uh, that I enjoyed very much. I thought I took a ton of value from it and uh, I felt guilty if I wouldn't have joined your incubator program. So <laughs> we're here good now stuff, and we're in man. good shape. Good stuff, man. So only two weeks, but you've had, have you crossed hundred K yet this month? We're $1,200 short of hundred K. Oh, damn. You probably, maybe yeah. you'll hit it during the call then. <laughs> yeah, that'd be so, great. So um, is that in October or is that in the last 30 days? That's in October. So we've got plenty of time. Um, oh, yeah, we'll but October is our first full month. So were you like, so you came in the program, where were you at when you joined? Did you, ha you had already had sales, I'm guessing, or like how far along were you when you actually joined two weeks ago? Yeah. So the store was fully operational. Um, we were running ads and really what I've been doing for the past couple of weeks since joining is just optimizing all the shopping ads. And have you found that that's made like a pretty big difference like in in an increase or like how many so I guess if you joined two weeks ago, uh you would have joined about the tenth. How many sales did you have at the tenth when you joined versus like the tenth till the twenty third today? I don't know the exact number of sales, but we did fifty K last week. Damn. So yeah, so it was a, it was a strong week. Um and with that said, the spend has gotten a lot better. I was experimenting with some shopping or with some uh, search ads. Um, we've now moved our focus predominantly to shopping. So that's helped to clean things up quite a bit. That's super cool, man. That's like, um, borderline as fast to start as I had. I think the first month I did, I think I got my first sale the 21st of October, almost the same time. Funny enough, October 21st, two years ago. And I had, nice. I think 30 K by the end of the month. And then I did like 177 in November. So it sounds like you're on pretty much the exact same trajectory, which is super cool. Let's go. <laughs> were you um i remember how it felt so i'm imagining you're you're probably quite surprised probably very excited uh, did this come as a surprise or is this did you did you feel very good about your niche coming in or like just kind of how are you feeling about everything yeah a bit uncertain on the niche um with that said i've had experience for like the greater part of my life in that specific industry um so yeah. my knowledge is very specialized um, with that said, I had never ran a Google ad prior to going through your free course. Um, so that was the biggest learning curve was, was figuring that sort of thing out. Um, I do have experience in building, um, other products, specifically marketplaces. Um, so I've kind of parlayed that experience into the store and it really helped me out, um, operationally on the design side of things, um, just knowing where to allocate my time. So my life experience has really translated into the success of, of where we're currently at. Do you think that having um, life experience or previous knowledge in your industry has helped you close suppliers quite quickly? Yeah, so I kind of chuckle when I see like the term high ticket sales get thrown around on uh, Twitter, but I, I do have experience in high ticket sales, what, what I consider to be high ticket sales. So my background was in commercial real estate um, specifically investment sales. So like talking with multi-million dollar clients, billionaire clients. Um, so in terms of sales, I feel like I'm, I'm on the advanced side of things. Um, and that has certainly helped with being on the phone with my customers because they're also pretty wealthy individuals. Um, so I know how to have those conversations with those types of people. And do you find that like, <clears throat> so that's on the sales side of things, but like you're, your niche specifically, you have experience there too, right? I do. We, we won't, we won't say the niche on the call, but do you find that when you're actually reaching out to suppliers, when you're closing them, that having like experience in your niche has helped you like onboard them at a faster pace than you might've been able to otherwise? 100% just because I speak their language. Um, and that comes through over the phone. It comes through in my copywriting, um, in the deck that I put together. So very much so. So you mentioned that, um, you were in commercial real estate before. Did you, is that a uh, previous job or is that something you're still doing now alongside the store? No, I still operate that business. Um, so I'm working on both at the same time and it's been a, a juggling act to some degree. I think 
uh, I had mentioned to you when you were uh, trying to get me to join the, the incubator, I was actually waiting for a couple really big deals to close just so I could free up some time. Um, so luckily those deals closed and now I've been able to allocate even more time to the store, which has been very helpful. So what led to you being interested in high ticket income overall? Was it just, was it like a dissatisfaction with the, the real estate side of things? Was it just wanting to try something new or like what kind of led you down that path to begin with? Sure. So real estate's in a really tricky spot right now with where rates are. Um, it's just very hard to get deals done. And I hate the term passive income, but I've been looking for something that provides more of a passive element. Like it's really cool to be able to wake up and have four or five sales come through. Yeah. Um, yeah. With that said, I came across your content and I really resonated with your background because I also had experience being a professional athlete um, playing a sport in college. And I looked at you and I said, this is somebody that has life experience. Um, you're a former athlete. And, and that came through in the way that you were teaching the free course. I could tell that you're a pretty intense guy. And I really yeah. resonated with the way that you delivered information. That's awesome, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I find that overall in, in, uh, like coming from an athletics background, like I find people like us who have previously played sports, you almost have to do business. I don't think you could, it's like that kind of competitive element, but also just having control over your own outcome in a way. Like it, it just gives life some sort of flavor where if you're just going and doing the same thing every single day at a job, I, I really can't, can't imagine it. So I think like whenever I'm hiring people or whenever I'm like trying to find someone for a certain position, like someone with an athletic background, like that's always a huge, huge check mark, like in their favor. How do you find that, like, specifically what traits from athletics have transferred into business for you? Just the intensity, man. Like, I will go to the the end end spectrum to get a W. Um, I don't care, like, how I feel. I don't care what mental state I'm in. Like, I'll just make it happen, and I'm going to do something until the wheels come off. Yeah, I'm the exact same way. I'm the exact same way. So with the store now, um, obviously putting up some pretty big numbers, is it just you or have you, are you working with, with someone or have you hired a, a VA or, or what have you delegated? What exactly are you doing? What are you not? So I haven't delegated anything. I'm kind of a sicko. Um, so I'm still, <laughs> <laughs> so still doing pretty much everything myself. I do have a really good friend that I've been consulting with some of the ads uh, on, but nonetheless, I just, I went into this with the mind frame that I'm just going to get as far along as possible, um, with the minimum amount of capital required. Yeah. Um, I have had to invest some additional capital that other people probably have not, um, to actually purchase products from some of my vendors. Um, yeah. so I actually enjoyed that just because it created a bit of a barrier to entry that I was completely okay yeah. with. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Like if you have the capital to do so, like almost these barriers to entry, like a lot of people when they come in, um, there'll be these sort of barriers. Sometimes it's that sometimes the supplier will want you to purchase a product. Other times the suppliers is very difficult to close. Like we've had people go for lunch with suppliers to close them. Other times, um, they want you, they'll start you at a lower margin and then you have to work your way up over time, depending on your sales numbers. Like a lot of people get, uh, kind of shy to shy away from this stuff when they're starting. But in my opinion, like this is a good sign. Or another guy, uh, I did an interview with him before. He has like a very complex product. So he actually like said his store name in the in the thing. It was uh, like bulldozer lifts and stuff essentially. So very, very complex and hard to understand. But all these things are moats because once you figure them out, it is really it really is quite hard for someone else to do so as well. And that's the thing, like when you're selling other brands' products, like you don't want someone who just started e-commerce two days ago to be able to close the same supplier as you get everything on their website in a breeze right away. Like, like barriers right. to entry are a good thing. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Have you found that they give you the, the ones that you're stocking for, are they giving you more favorable margins compared to the ones who don't? Cause that's usually what happens when you do stock. They're not, um, at least with one of them, the margins are pretty tight. Um, with that said, they're one of the biggest brands in my specific uh, niche. And I felt without them, I could not have the brand reputation that I've been able to establish so quickly. Have they said anything about potentially increasing it as you go? Yeah, it's, uh, it's tiered. So it will get better over time. So with the sales to this point, 
uh, I guess, can you maybe break down of like how many brands you have total? And then what's the distribution of sales like? Is it like an 80, 20, 90, 10, or are you pretty even across the board? Ooh, I would say that four to five brands are making up the bulk of our sales. Um, and those are really essential components to the business that I operate in. Um, and then 12 to 15 brands in total. Okay. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty normal. Like it's usually about 20% in my, in my experience that will make up the meat of it. Mm-hmm. So with your niche, <clears throat> I know it is a bit, or I guess I think it's a bit seasonal. Maybe not. Is it? Do you know? Yes. Um, the only time that it's a bit slow is in the summer. And I've been looking for products to kind of mitigate some of that, you know, seasonality. Um, with that said, the people that buy my products, um, they're very addicted to the specific, the specific niche, um, because it's also in sporting goods. So that's, uh, that works in our favor. That's uh, that's interesting. So, uh, I'm not sure if you ever watched the interview, but I did an interview with uh, a man named John Murphy. Did you ever watch that interview? I didn't. He he sell. It's not the same niche as you, but he sells e bikes to to hunters. He's very open about his store. But uh, he, I have he heard sells, you talk about that. Yeah. So he has kind of it sounds like a similar target market to you. So I remember him telling me like he has a very niche store. Like he doesn't only just like some people would sell mobility like e-bikes scooters kind of like anything mobility that would be like a, a somewhat broad store in my opinion then like even more niche than that would be just e-bikes and he's even more niche than that so he's like e-bikes for hunters specifically which is like extremely niche and i remember he was giving me an analogy one time like if you're selling mobility and someone abandoned carts your abandoned cart copy is going to be like you left xyz item in the cart check out but he can be like you're going to miss your hunt this fall like he can speak directly to his target customer, which really gives yeah. him an, an advantage. And it sounds like that might be sort of the case with your store as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So then given that, I know you mentioned it's a bit seasonal. Are you being cognizant or I guess mindful of when you are trying to find these products that are to mitigate the seasonality? Are you being careful not to water down that nicheness like can you add products that will keep it very branded like that yeah absolutely because it all falls under the same sport so i'm not too concerned about that that makes sense that makes sense yep cool um so what would you say has been kind of the breaking point for you so if you could pick one thing is it the niche you picked uh is it your is it your uh, execution of the ads? Do you have a really nice site? What do you think has been kind of the biggest dif- differentiating factor in your success to this point? I would say not delegating anything like me just being involved in every single detail and putting in maximum effort has made it what it is. Um, I haven't skipped any steps. I was super diligent about going through the coursework. Um, I actually went through it three times the free course. And I checked yeah. every I checked every <laughs> single step along the way because I'm also super OCD. So it is what it is. Like I have to get through things the right way, or like I won't do it at all. Were you doing the the free course? Was it the nine hour YouTube one? Yes, you went through that three times. That's three crazy. times. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but that's that's what that's the attention to detail that it takes. And I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people who don't do well what they'll do is they'll come in and they'll hire like two VAs right away. And it's like, you, you can't like when you're building a business, you cannot rush to get out of the business. <laughs> like no. the only time you should delegate something in my opinion is like, first you should get good at it yourself or I should get good at it myself, whatever it is. The, per- the business owner should get very, very good at it. And then the only time they should then outsource that is when there is something their their time is so constrained that it's hurting the business by them continuing to do it because then they're not doing something else. Correct. So like as the business grows, you're going to have ads, you're going to have email, you're going to have customer service, sales calls. And like at some point you're going to have to say like, where's my time best spent? And then you mm-hmm. want to delegate the least important. But a lot of people are in like the wrong frame of mind that they haven't even built the business yet. And they're trying to have essentially like, 
they don't even know how to do anything, but they're trying to have like virtual assistants run the store. And then they wonder why things aren't being done well. So I think I'm glad that you brought that up. It's a really, really good point. Cause um, like you said, like if, if you do everything right from the beginning, like that is a huge competitive advantage over people who don't do that. Yeah. Like at this point, I don't have to go back and clean anything else up. Um, I've been involved with startups before where we've had to go back and do a lot of cleanup and it wears the team down. It wears you down. Um, it ruins your creative flow. So I'm really thankful that it's just been done correctly from the get go. Yeah. It makes complete sense. So, um, do you have goals for the store short term, um, long term? What are your kind of short term goals? Like, let's say by the end of this year and maybe mid next year towards the end of next year, where do you see yourself taking this? So our biggest competitor is doing 2 million in monthly gross revenue. Um, Mm -hmm. I would like to surpass them. Um, I think it's completely feasible just because a lot of the folks that have spun up stores in my niche, um, they're not experienced in that specific niche. They either come from tech or other business. So I feel like with my specialized experience, it can allow us to surpass those um, thresholds pretty easily. Good stuff, man. And would you ever, so that competitor you're talking about, are they only drop shipping? Have they launched their own brand on their store? What does their store look like now at that level? Yeah, so they do have their own products. um, And that's something that we're looking into. Uh, It really just comes down to, you know, where I feel I can compete the best and where I also think that there's a big need for a product. Like I'm not just going to create something just to do it. Um, it, it. For me, it must feel like, that product's going to do well, there's a need for it. Um, I have to feel that there's built in demand. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And like, I'm actually in the process of launching my own brand now in one of the spaces that I sold a lot in, but working with drop shipping stores, it really does allow you to know the market very well. Like I know everything I don't like about those brands and I know what I want my products to have that they don't. So even just, I don't think it's something you need to do any, anytime soon, but as you work with these brands, as you get familiar with them, you will see, I think, clear areas to improve. And then that could be a potential area where you would want to launch your own. Yeah, 100%. I mean, there's so many great attributes to this business model. Um, there's sales, there's product development, um, running ads, like it's, it's endless. Um, so in terms of a pathway to create your own product, I think this is a great avenue. I agree. Yeah, because there's really like, it, it is kind of crazy. Like yesterday we had, um, I'm sure you saw on the wind channel, a guy sold like a $157,000 order. Like <laughs> the fact that you can, you can legitimately start the business for like 500 bucks and you could make a sale like that within a couple months is it's kind of actually mind blowing to even think about <laughs> like these yeah, brands, they're like very, these very well-known brands that have been around for like very, very long time. Like you can just send them an, uh, an email or a pitch deck and they'll let you sell their stuff. And you literally don't have to have much money to get started. It's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But a lot of people just aren't willing to do the work to get the store up and running. Like there's just yep. so many people that want to shortcut everything. And like, if you just do the actual work, like you're going to have good results. Um, my, you know, monthly search terms are not even that great. Like it's, it's not even that popular of a niche. Um, but I've just created a good marketplace. Right. And that's been the key to our success. And man, that's, that's honestly the key with every student success is like, it, it's on my side of things, it's crazy because I'll see two students in the same niche and one's saying like how bad it is, how they can't do anything, how, and then the other student will be executing and they'll be crushing it, but they're in the same niche. And it's just, it all really comes down to execution. It comes down to attention to detail, putting in the work, all the things that just sound so, so cliche. That really is the difference maker because people will come in they're so worried about competition like oh like there's so many stores in this niche and uh, how am i gonna be able to make sales it's like it's very very simple a lot of these stores aren't doing this very well so if you just do a better job than the stores in the marketplace you're gonna get sales and you're gonna do very well so right. instead of worrying about competition like why is that not the focus because if that's the focus and you do that it's impossible to fail 100 percent. i mean you could have greater success than your competitors just solely based off of customer service like I yeah. follow up with every abandoned cart customer. I reach out to everybody that's bought products from us previously, um, just to see like if they're enjoying the product, if they have any feedbacks, so, like I'm constantly collecting data and I'm always making those touches. 
That's awesome. And that's what it takes. Like, yeah, like calling your abandoned carts. When you have an order, call the customer and get a review from them. Call them and ask them, literally say to them, why did you buy from us? And just see what they say, and then that will give you data as to what to do more. Maybe they say you had a great site, maybe they say your customer service, and then just double down on why. But a lot of people won't do these things because they're not pleasant. They're not they they're not sitting on the couch making sales all day. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um cool, a couple more questions. So kind of related to the previous one. Would you ever is there a point where you would want to sell the store? Do you think a certain number that you want to get to, or is this something that you kind of see yourself working on for as long as you can see into the future for now? Yeah. So I want to have at least 18 months of cash flows before I even like entertain the idea of selling it. Um, yep. And I'd really like to have my own product um, before I consider selling it just because I think it adds so much value. Awesome. Um, with that said, uh, I'm not opposed to selling it but uh, I'm enjoying it right now and I'll probably just do it until I get sick of it. And then once you sell it, you can do it again if you really want to, if you miss it. Yeah, exactly. You got to <laughs> jump right back into the fire. Yeah. Um, cool, man. Well, so last question. Um, if you could just talk about your experience in the program or the experience you took from um, the course you went through before you joined and just overall advice for someone getting into the business model, whether it, uh, if you could give yourself advice or someone who's new to it, they're not really sure what to think, where to start, what advice would you give them? Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of the course itself, I love how you have it structured. You've got, you know, specific teams for every individual that they get paired up with. Um, everybody is, is pretty high specialized. Um, you have somebody for ads, you have a mentor, you have a lot of intelligent people in the group overall. Um, and that comes through in the questions that I get asked in my DMs. Um, it's been a pleasure to connect with everybody so far. Um, in terms of joining courses, um, what I would tell people is just to really assess the mentor. Um, as I previously mentioned, uh, I looked at your background and, you know, I just saw a lot of credible things, you know, former athlete, former career, went to law school. Like, so I looked at you as an individual before I was okay with even going through your free content. And then I was yep. even more okay when it came time to send you, you know, 5,000 plus dollars, like, I'm like, sure, like take the money. Like it's cause I know it's going to be a good result. I, yeah, I think that's great advice. And <clears throat> especially in today's market, um, like obviously every, everyone watching you, me, like we all see this, the ads on our timelines of like everybody, everyone's running ads for things. Many of them haven't actually done anything themselves. So I think like in, in any situation when you're learning from someone, um, it, it's very important that they've obviously done it themselves, but even more important than that is I think that they uh, have either done it very, very recently or are, con are continuing to do it because a lot of people will be doing the thing and then they'll stop doing the thing and they'll have a program and they keep the program going. And then five years down the line, their knowledge is outdated and everything sucks, but they're still kind of relying on their past achievements. So I think not only that the person has done it, but they continue to do it because that's like now that I have my own brand, I'm very, very incentivized to have the freshest knowledge at all times because I have a lot of skin in the game now buying my own inventory and stuff. So yeah, great advice. And, and thanks to the kind words, man. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Absolutely. I enjoyed it. And uh, I wish everybody in the program the best. Awesome. Really looking forward to watching you continue crushing it and hitting that two mil mark by next year. Let's go. Cool, man. Uh...